Front-end scripts is that did involve quite a lot of beer and chicken wings. Um, but this is our core team right now that is working on Leap 5. We have Jono, who is Master and Commander of the Universe on this. Uh, Jim Jordan, who are here. Chris, who is here. Eric, who is not here. Uh, Andrea and Zeke, who are running docs. Andrea is here. And uh, obviously the graphic design. We've also somehow convinced, I hope, Bill uh, to do the security. Uh, Goran to do some of our email form stuff. And Goran to do some of the um, uh, statistical stuff that we're doing. One very important concept here is that uh, it's not going to be technically open source. However, the intent is that developers in this room, we're not here to feed off of you guys and take your money. We're here to provide you guys with a framework, if you're interested, to use Leap to build websites and the end client is the person that we will be charging. So thinking like iPhone or creating a, a, a metaphor to build applications, get applications to the end user quick, so that we have a framework to get things out to the end guy. So who is it for? It is for users, graphic designers, users being uh, your average guy on the street who sells cookies or is, works for GE or whatever you wish. Graphic designers to make things look pretty and lots of developers to have that framework. And of course, any random guy with extra cash, I would love to talk to. I want to show you a quick, quick rundown of this. You're going to get more on this tomorrow from Jono. But basically, this is the way Leap works. You go to a website, and you have three, cho three choices here. You have the Leap Classic, which is I type the word Leap. So what we're actually doing is we're monitoring keystrokes. And this is for end users who can to easily edit, the, uh, edit their website. You go to the site, you type the word Leap into your computer. And what happens is, or there's another option, and that is to rub the frog. I uh, will talk about this at the end, but we actually have a USB button which you press and it will turn it into administration mode. And of course, you can also gesture L now once you've logged in. So what, if you do one of these things, what happens is you get a command prompt, or not a command prompt, a, uh, uh, a user login. Yeah. And you would obviously type in your user information and what happens, bam, you get the leap menu and you get our lenses. So these critical things to understand First is clothesline. This is how we talk about Leap. Basically, we see every page on the website as having two sides to it, just like a clothesline. So when I'm putting clothes on the clothesline, I'm standing on the, on, facing the street or facing away from the street. As I put the clothes up, I can duck under the clothesline, come back up, and look at the other side. I can then walk back and forth along the clothesline on the administration side using regular menus or duck back under and look at the other side. So there is no administration section to Leap. This is, this is, it is literally, the website turns into an administration tool. And what we do is, we have these lenses, you'll see these in green, which are actually the editable areas of the page. So you would click one of those areas and you would be able to edit it. Uh, there's also some, uh, a drawer which slides down, which does some of the other things. There's also obviously like a, a light box concept, which allows you to, John will be showing you more of this tomorrow, which allows you to do editing of site-wide things. Uh, there's actually a fairly, it's fairly comprehensive. We have been through this with a group of lots of developers to say what is it that we could possibly do cool here to provide a great framework to build websites on, and every idea we've thrown in here. Um, and of course, in terms of editing, I simply click on one of those lenses and I would get an edit box. I can edit that and it will return to something else. I can also add pages. The idea is one of the things that we really push is uh, search engine friendly URLs. So we actually have built a little SEO system this is for end users so you can go in and add a page and it will make recommendations to you on what the page should be called based on the, on the keywords that you put in. And that allows you to start off on the right foot. So instead of going back later and fixing SEO stuff, it starts you off on the foot of search engine optimization. Um, and obviously we're working with Google and Bing to try and uh, make sure that we've got, we're tying into their APIs as well as possible to make sure that the search engine optimization is as good as humanly possible. Um, I just realized I can say anything I want up here and John has to build it. Um, <laughs> that's great. It's going to make pancakes in the morning. Um, so we also have a workflow, obviously, we can talk about that. Um, there's a lot of different module types. This is where we're getting to talk about what designers do. So designers, we're obviously graphic designers. My wife is a graphic designer. and. Uh, I've been forced to live under the command of graphic designers since I started as a lasso guy. 
So instead of me getting to say, this is what we should do, the designer says, this is what you're going to do, and then I try and make it work. So that's how Leap sort of came about. Um, the idea is if I take a website, uh, say what you want about Obama, but he has a damn good website. And what you would do is uh, you would break up all of the content on, the, on that page into different types of spaces, we call them. Um, those spaces uh, are basically broken into, for example, content areas, which would be user-driven, different from page to page, to menu areas, which would be things, obviously, menus, everybody gets that, uh, to component areas, which are things that are editable across many websites, uh, to portals, which are things that are drawn from other pages or content that is drawn from other, other things in the website, um, to widgets, which are things which are drawn from applications, which, are, which I'll talk about in a sec, and obviously just good old-fashioned static HTML and static Lasso, which you put in the skins. So it makes it very extensible to work with. As for Lasso developers, for you guys, the idea here is we're really pushing nine. Nine! Go <laughs> nine! Um, and what we, what we would like to do is have everything native to nine that goes into the system. Um, we're trying to create a consistent framework for to add plugins, etc. cetera. John is again going to talk about more about this tomorrow. Um, we want to have, a, obviously, a clear develop, set of developer specifications, and we're going to document it like you wouldn't believe. Um, and what I'm hoping is that some of you guys will join us in the community. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, as well, we have applications. So this is actually one of the realizations is, in terms of making a website operating system as opposed to just a content management system, we want to create a, a, a much more uh, robust framework to tie in a lot of different types of data, user data, visit data, everything relating to people that come to the web, and allow people, and again, use the Leap framework to edit content to use that to build applications with it. So, for example, we have an application which we use called FrogWeb. Um, and this is a fairly comprehensive time tracking system that we use not only ourselves, but through other clients. And we're going to take that and make it one of the first applications available through Leap. So it ties into the same Leap framework and users, so users can get to the website, uh, so that clients can, can, can be integrated, so you can transfer files, et cetera, through this system. It does project management, time tracking, et cetera. Um, as well, we have an e-learning system built by General over the last year, uh, which is a basically uses the Leap framework to allow users who don't know computers well uh, to add educational content. So they use Leap, and this manages classes and uh, people, et cetera. So again, another application using the Leap framework to build on top of. Uh, we also have Touchpoint Advocate, which is a simple CRM. Talk a little bit more about that. Uh, and Jordan is, is in the midst of building for our other politicians in Canada. Um, we have our own little thing going on, as everybody does. Uh, Polywog, which is a politician CRM management system. Um, so for all these purposes, you get the general idea. We also have a lot of other things in the mix which we are building. So these are things that plug into or go on top of Leap and uses the basic concepts to do all sorts of nifty stuff. So when and when when is this going to come out? After L9 or January the first? So help me God. <laughs> 